Hey, welcome everybody to the OK Boomer Show. This is David Knight, and it's episode four with John McLean. And John McLean is on the line all the way from Sydney, Australia. Good morning, John. Good morning, Dave. Have you had as much coffee as me? Uh, I've had my coffee. It's always a great way to start the day. I know you and I have got a lot of coffee history. We're kind of coffee fans, right? What do you, what do you have in the morning? Uh, I am currently on almond lattes and am a huge fan. Almond, almond latte. Uh, that's almond milk, no, not uh, latte. Uh, latte with almond squirt, sugar, sugar almond juice in it. That's right. So almond milk uh, with a double shot to get me going. What about you, buddy? What are you on to at the moment? Man, I make my own in the morning. I get this uh, little Italian espresso machine and I crank it up, put some fresh beans in there and uh, just giddy up. Get about two or three of those into me and uh, I'm good to go. Awesome. But we, we do digress. Uh, let's get back on track. So uh, for those that have been watching, this is uh, celebrating John's fourth book, A Change, A Constant Challenge. This is episode four. We are three letters into the five M's or three words into the five M's. Um, so John's book is all about change, his life experience, and the five M's are map, mindset, mentor, motivation, and momentum. So if you haven't seen all these, go back in time, check out the previous series. But today, John, we're talking about mentor. And in the book, you say the delicate balance of mentoring someone is not creating them in your own image, but giving them the opportunity to create themselves. Break that down for me. What does all that mean? Okay, so just on the mentor piece, I think uh, I've got a couple of really good examples to share with you, both in sport and also in, uh, in business. And um, the, the piece on mentor is to be able to encourage someone to find themselves. Maybe it's just the right question at the right time. Maybe it's just that opportunity to kind of shift you in a different direction in terms of, you know, your thought process. One that uh, really comes to mind and resonates strongly with me from a business presenting standpoint. I was asked to speak many years ago uh, to Pfizer, the pharmaceutical firm, and uh, the head guy, Mark Robinson, his name, who's continued to be a, a dear friend. So my relationship with him as a mentor has lasted many years. So he said, you know, we want to get you to come along and have a talk to the sales team. And obviously I did that and had a, re a really positive response. And after that, he said, hey, listen, there's an opportunity to connect in with the CEOs. Uh, would you like that uh, challenge? And I said, that's fantastic. So I, I took the same presentation I did for the sales guys into the CEO group, which was a very different outcome, meaning some of those guys got up towards the back end and left, uh, and it wasn't exactly the same. So here I am in the car after the presentation, and in terms of a line of questioning for a mentor, Mark said, John, how did you think that went? So therefore, he was putting me in the driver's seat. And I said, I don't think it went as well as the first one. The next question was, why do you think that was the case? And I said, I'm not sure. I kind of, I felt like when I did something with the sales guys and it was a funny line, people laughed. And when I did it with the CEOs, they did not. And he said, okay, here's the lesson. Um, know your audience. Salespeople have a lot of energy and therefore often time and therefore you can go into detail where if you're a CEO, you don't have as much time. You might need to get onto a plane and therefore less is more and, and to know your audience. So that is a, a really good example for me around uh, a mentor is the person that can ask the right questions at the right time or say the right words to uh, assist you. And he was certainly a great example of that. Yeah. So, John, in the book, um, your first mentor you mentioned is actually your father, right? So, you know, I had the privilege of meeting him on many occasions, especially when you were pushing yourself to the limit. You know, talk to me about that relationship and why he was such a special mentor to you. Well, I think if you looked at my dad, and there's, a, again, a great example, um, encouraging and asking questions uh, and, and giving advice at critical times, for example. I've, I've got a, a couple to share. Uh, I remember he said that sport's a great way of meeting people and making friends in terms of our early stages growing up where we grew up. And, you know, I, I seem to do okay at sports. And there was one particular time where, you know, I had done really well. Um, and dad said, you know, I, I don't care if you come first or last, as long as you try your best. So these pieces of nuggets of gold that really kind of stuck with me. Um, and I went on to win the Australian Championships when I was 12, which for that age group in the sport that I was participating in. And I, I was really happy and confident. And, you know, I, I guess I got swept up in the moment. Um, and what I didn't do, I didn't go straight away to see my mum and dad and my brother and sister. And dad was really disappointed. 
And you know when we got because I had there was a bus trip there and a bus trip back, and obviously Dad picked me up. And he left a message again saying, "Son, you don't ever need to conduct yourself like that. Never forget the importance of you know who supported you." And it really kind of resonated. Um, and then you know I went on to have a career in in sport, playing football. And then as you know, after my accident. Um, a, a dad saying, whilst I was in hospital, son, I would give you my legs if I could. So, you know, really powerful words. And then after a little bit of time and coming back home, he then asked that beautiful question, you know, son, how far can you go? So I guess for myself, dad was just uh, always saying the right things and uh, encouraging me to explore my full potential. So uh, I miss him. He's obviously he's no longer with us, but um, I have had the very good fortune of reflecting back on some of the words of wisdom that he had kind of posted to me over time. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you talk about as well, um, you know, a lot of the challenges that you have taken on board, especially the English Channel, right? And you know, talk, to, talk to me about like finding the right mentor for the English Channel, um, you know, why that's important in the process of achieving greatness, you know, why, that, why, why mentor is such an important part of the change process. Why, why is that? Well, I think it's, it's here's what I learned. Um, pre-accident, I kind of thought I knew the answer to lots of my own questions. Clearly, I was young, naive, and wrong. Uh, what I've learned over time is the importance of doing any change is that you have to build a team and then get the right members of the team around the table. And a mentor is critical because he or she often has been where you want to go and therefore has knowledge and insights that you can gain benefit from if you have the courage to ask the question. So example for, for me for the English Channel, I wanted to speak to a couple of people who had had experience and therefore knowledge. And the two people that come to mind, one is Des Renford and the other is Susie Moroni. Let me share those names with the audience. So Des Renford had swum the channel 19 times and he knew that uh, body of water intimately. So he's me who is not coming from a background of marathon swimming. So I'm a, I'm a sponge. I want to get to him, ask relevant questions to gain insights that then might help my attempt of swimming the channel. So Des basically said the first time, John, it could be as flat as a carpet or it could blow up to 20 foot seas. So he gave me a, a mental picture on, you know, mother nature kind of controls the channel, whatever the channel does, it does. It's not a fixed, it's not like running a hundred meters and therefore there's a, there's a track and you need to cover that distance. It could be a lot longer as we both know. So Des was instrumental in giving me a really good understanding of the channel and therefore I would ask questions like, Des, what would my training look like? He said, well, you need to do a lot of kilometers. You need to have building uh, building blocks over time to increase your distance. You need to spend a lot of time in cold water. Um, you need to start to understand all the challenges that can come with the English channel. So I guess by asking all these questions of a mentor, I was able to create a bit of a picture. So whatever the conditions laid for myself, I had these tools to access because I had those conversations with someone who knew what they were talking about. So Des played a critical uh, a part in terms of also connecting me with our, our, our pilot, Reg Brickle. So uh, Des used to use his father back in the day. And again, there's knowledge, there's experience. So we were put in the right hands via uh, Des Renford. The other girl, Susie Moroni, uh, at the time was the only Australian to have done a double crossing. And it was wonderful to meet with Susie. It was wonderful to have a swim with Susie. And again, ask some relevant questions around, you know, what I could expect and what, what did her training regime look like? What did she eat or drink during her uh, attempts? And therefore, also, <clears throat> when I reached out to Susie, she was very grateful for the opportunity and wanted to do all that she could to help and support. And I think there's a really good lesson, Dave, that often we think, you know, we can't access a mentor because he or she doesn't have time for us. In actual fact, it's as we get older, we gain you know, responsibility and knowledge. It's therefore our part to pass that on. So both those people were huge mentors to me in my preparation for the English Channel. So uh, part of the section on mentoring, you go into mentoring versus coaching. Is there, is there a difference? Yeah, I think for, for me, coaching is about performance. And I guess we've got a great example with uh, my student coach, David Harvey. And I think, you know, mentors about relationships. And I think, you know, we've got a great example there with Des Renford. So I, th I think, you know, my coach, Dave Harvey, his, his role was to help me get better at swimming. So there's a set of skills and techniques that I needed to understand and learn. And, you know, we spent a lot of time going up and down the pool to slow down my stroke rate, which took a long time. And 
he was always there. So a coach is someone who's there on a very regular basis and a mentor is someone that you can access to get insights or knowledge over time. And I think that's the difference. There's a set of uh, a, a time frame often with, with coaching. Uh, I think with a mentor, that can be done over many years. And, you know, I still have a great relationship with, uh, with Mark Robinson, who I mentioned, that's continued. And now I have a wonderful relationship with uh, Des Renford had passed away, but I have a great relationship with his son. So therefore, you can see how that can be paid forward. And there is a definitely a, a huge difference between the coaching versus mentoring. Yeah, I think you mentioned it. I mean, it's 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 often, you know, that uh, that young person that's, you know, full of energy and wants to go do something. And then you've got older guys like you and I who've done some stuff. Right. And you're right. I, I get a lot of satisfaction out of helping people that are trying to accomplish stuff. Right. They're trying to give you the the words of wisdom, right? Um, try and reduce the scars and, and gray hair and body damage that we've put ourselves through and just trying to at least set people up for success, right? And and give them the hard yards. And certainly thinking back on you as my mentor, right? When I met you and you, you know, done Hawaii for the second time and I crazily said, well, this triathlon stuff looks like fun. Why don't I try one? Um, and then, you know, preparing myself in the last four weeks to go and do a, just an Olympic distance in Noosa and you coming up and kind of talking me through that. I can remember the dinner before the, before the race, you know, just trying to, trying to get you get in your head a little bit, like what, what am I going to experience, right? What's the good, the bad and the ugly that the day ahead presents. And, you know, um, certainly again, as I did my first Ironman and uh, up in Foster and you were there as well. And just, again, like, how bad can this day go, right? And and what what have you experienced? And and how does one mentally get through that? Um, and and again, it's about the mental side more than anything. I think mentors mentors are very good, and maybe that's why it's MET, right? Preparing you mentally, right? Where coaches are probably more about preparing you physically. Maybe that's part of that that difference. But I thank you personally for all the mentorship you gave me as we kind of started to do some crazy stuff anyway bit of history uh, i like this uh sentence you have in the book a good mentor offers directions and driving tips from the back seat but you still have to drive the car right so it's, yeah, not, it's yeah. not, not taking away any responsibility it's just like trying to keep you in the right lane right and heading in the right direction well i look at you and i for example and it's a huge honor to have you uh, as a as a lifelong brother to a different mother. But I think, you know, when we look at our experiences, right, we've had some amazing experience and we have access mentors along the way to, to help us. You know, I, I don't know too many people that have done the Hawaiian Ironman and swum the English Channel. There are not many of those people on this planet. So it's nice that you and I are a part of that club. And therefore, how did we get there? Well, we access mentors along the way to, to assist in our journey. And you're right, it's, it's often about the conversations, the mental conversations that we have that will either put the brakes on or maybe put the accelerator on to help us get to uh, the destination. So I think when, in terms of uh, mentors, they've always played a critical role in, in my life. And therefore coming back to this whole change piece, I always wanna make sure whatever I'm doing that's different, there needs to be that whole team and a mentor is critical to that process. So uh, for me with you, when you know going back, uh, supporting you do, doing a little trifle and going on to do uh, Ironman, it's just about having the conversations and being there at the right time to hopefully add advice and support to encourage you to drive your own bus. You know, you had to swim, you had to bike and you had to run the distance. But it's good to be able to access people that have had the experience and that really gives you that encouragement to continue to put another foot in front of the other to to get to where you, you need to get to. So, um, you know, mentors, uh, well, they're, they're very powerful. Yep. Another name you mentioned, Alex Hamill, um, you know, who, again, is a really strong mentor for you and I, both both actually on the sport and business side. Um, let's talk about him for a bit. Um, what's he up to these days? So let's take a step back with Alex. Alex was, um, he was the head of an advertising company called George Patterson Bates here in Australia many years ago. Um, he Large, had this lot, largest ad, uh, ad agency in Australia, I think. Largest at the time? Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and just had this wonderful ability to be able to connect with people. Um, there's so many beautiful stories. Let's briefly touch on Alex because I, I love him. It's always nice to talk about him as a mentor as well. 
So here's Alex, and he just had this love of life and sport and business. So he kind of, I think he really got, he got the balance right. One of the examples was running Comrades in South Africa, running up with this guy, and this guy's kind of starting to struggle. And he kind of encouraged him to keep on going, and let's do it together. And, um, you know, wonderful to see that whole picture come to life and that particular chap you might recall david wrote many books and there was a famous movie and right. and alex and he had this wonderful conversation and opportunity so when mandela came to sydney um that whole piece came together because alex had started established that um, relationship so alex is someone who can you know run uh, businesses he's also someone who can you know, do ironmans and he's just a wonderful person to be around and, and enthused lots of energy and stuff and i you know, Alex's uh, secret or strength, I feel, is when he spends time, which isn't, isn't often, he'll ask you a whole lot of questions in a short period of time to gain a huge insight to how you're going and therefore how, he, how can he can assist some of your journeys just by asking questions and supporting. So Alex is a wonderful uh, example for me and for you as a mentor. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought you were going to say the word and, and maybe it was in the background presence, right? Like he was always present, right? You know, we didn't get, ever get enough time with him and those times were very special, whether we were riding a bike or catching up for dinner or doing or training really hard. I mean, he's a hard man, trained super hard, pushed his body beyond, you know, certainly what I, I would push myself. But he was always super present. And I think that if you're ever in that mentor role, you know, it, it's, 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 a, it's a real commitment to being present. And you're right, asking those really tough questions, right? And getting to those nuggets of, you know, what's gonna help you unlock your power mentally, right? At the times you need it most, right? Um, so that's a real gift. Yeah, I mean, he, he had a lot of knowledge in business and he had a lot of knowledge in sport and he just felt that, you know, we need to pay this forward. So, and again, he wasn't going to come and knock on my door as Des Renford didn't come and knock on my door as many others didn't do that from a minute. The individual, I or you, need to get access to those mentors and ask the questions. And often they feel very humbled by the opportunity for you know for them to impart that knowledge. So it's important that the individual takes that first step in connecting into the right mentor. And the right mentor is the one that wants to follow the journey with you. You need to have things in common, right? You need to like each other. You need to want to help and support each other. So it's important to pick the right uh, mentor. So John, um, you, you've tried all sorts of new sports. I mean, one of the things that always amazed me is that phone call that says, oh, now I'm going to be rowing and go to Beijing and the, you know, the Paralympics, or, hey, I'm going to take up wheelchair sport. And I'm going to go, you know, represent a street. Talk to me about that and those two specific things, or maybe just whichever one resonates best. But how did you, how did you get into the, or how did you identify the right mentor for, for rowing or for wheelchair racing? Okay, I'll, I'll kind of take you back to Hawaii because I think that's a, a, a good starting point because I guess that's where it really kicked off for myself. Um, Greg Walsh won Hawaii, as you know, in 1994. And, you know, I, I wrote a, a note to get in touch with him to, you know, congratulate him. And, you know, he sent me some stuff and it, it was super cool. And I have a wonderful relationship with his mother. Uh, and whenever I caught up with Walsh, it was always, you know, great, great banter and just, you know, someone who's been at the highest level. And he was not a wheelchair athlete. Um, but he had experienced the course of Kona and therefore had some knowledge to, to impart and, and to prepare. Uh, the gentleman who I raced against uh, all those years ago is to qualify. He was kind of the benchmark. John Franks was uh, is his name. And therefore, you know, he had a lot of knowledge, but he wasn't the right mentor for me because he, he didn't want to share that knowledge. So therefore, it's important, again, to, to pick the right one. So I, I followed that path and now we're in a position to help others in terms of, you know, me being a mentor to, to athletes in that Ironman space. We've shared one with uh, Des Rainford and Susie in the swimming space. Uh, the next bit for me was to try and qualify for the, you know, for the games in Sydney. So what I did really quickly is, who are the best guys? So I was able to work that out pretty quickly because these are the guys who were winning. And therefore, when I had some time with them as we traveled around the world for two years to try and qualify for the games, I would just ask questions. Excuse me, you know, can you help me? I'm new to the sport. And therefore, they never saw me as a threat because... I was the guy who swam the channel, so therefore not a background of butcher racing. You know, what little, kind of little did racing? they know how big a threat you would be. <laughs> <laughs> but then it was then it, then it was what is the right type of racing wheelchair? What is the right size push rim? What are the right gloves? What is the just asking and asking and asking and then getting a, a bank of knowledge 
uh, pretty quickly because often these guys, they spent many, many years uh, honing and perfecting their craft. Um, but for me, I guess it's just asking those questions where previously I probably wouldn't have asked those questions when I was playing football, for example. And now it's like, okay, I've got to learn really quickly and I've got to ask the right people and gain that level of knowledge. So with all that questioning and obviously preparation and mindset, um, that got me to the game. So I was very grateful for accessing all of those other pieces. For rowing, for example, I, I asked a gentleman here in Australia who had won three Olympic gold medals in rowing, uh, Drew Ginn's his name. You know, what is it that I need to learn? What's the number one thing? And he said, it's so important that when you come forward and then engage your blade, then you apply effort. And it's equally important to find that balance to switch off to then recover and then go again. So rather than just me going flat chat and not being efficient or effective in the stroke of rowing, he was able to mentor me to say, really pay attention into feeling the recovery, feeling the placement and then driving. So it's actually switching on and switching off, not always switching on. So was he, part many, of the, many... was he part of the awesome foursome? Was he part of that group? He, abs he absolutely was. So Great. Drew was in 96 when the guys uh, won gold in Atlanta. Um, he was uh, he was at the back of the boat. So and then went on to, you know, multiple gold medals. But again, someone who knows, uh, here's another really good example with Drew. He said to me in terms of the build-up for the games, he said it's really important for you only to use your energy when you get into the boat heading to the start line. In other words... Don't use all this energy and conversation with yourself leading into an over-process and over-process. He said, because often those athletes get to the start line tired, mentally, mentally tired. Um, you want to get to the start line mentally ready to go and physically ready to go. So he, he was a mentor in a lot of different ways to me in the sport of rowing. So I was very grateful for that opportunity to meet with him. We had a mutual friend. Um, and again, we're still friends today. So great to... Uh, Great to have him as an example for me as a mentor in the sport of rowing. Yeah, so I, I guess the lesson here, right, and and you you elo eloquently pointed out in the book, and you know, change happens everywhere: at home, the office, sport, the sport field, whatever. Um, so you know, if we drill down to you know what's in it for me, right? So somebody watching this, um, let's just say they're in the business environment, right? It's really important that you find the right mentor for yourself, right? And again preferences are they're outside of the company that you work with right that they can have an independent view right that you have time with them and they invest time into you and they're able to help you navigate that path to where they are right so again you know you were able to find mentors that had swum the english channel 19 times right and so they were able to advise you so if you're in the world of marketing or business or finance or whatever that is then find somebody that's 15 20 years ahead of you right um you know so grab your age add 20 years and say i need to find that person right that's in this field that's you know and and oftentimes you know you can find them oftentimes you know your parents can introduce to their friends that are in that same space but it's really important team out there listening right that when you put your plan together that you part of that plan is finding a mentor right and most people at that age in, the, in that stage of their career would love to find somebody to help, right, and invest in. So, you know, make that, make that a priority. If you don't have a mentor right now, then spend the next 30 days trying to find one. Josh, do you have a mentor? Yes. Me? Oh, there you go. I'm inside the same company. Um, I can't help you. John can, though. Can I ask a, yeah, can I ask you a question? And, and Josh, yes, I'm very happy to help you with what you're working on. Um, I'm committed to that. So, um access me as a mentor to, to assist that dad can i ask you a question who's been some great mentors uh for you uh well you right on the sporting field um uh, i think alex hamill as well um just on the on the business side um our mutual friend hansi hans holzbosch um you know great mentor on on the business and life side um yeah i i, I think that's probably it i i had a couple of mentors in the PepsiCo world, um, not, not, not great outcomes there. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's nice telling myself now I've got to find a 75 year old, you know, mentor <laughs> that could help me in my next stage of my, my career. But uh, I'm really enjoying mentoring people. I really, it's something that I do. 
you know, the, the one of the reasons I ended up doing so many Ironman was that I'd find somebody that hadn't done one, and then I would say, hey, if you want to do it, you know, I'll train you and help you through it. So that got to meet at like 19 Ironman. So um, that's, and the latest was my daughter, which was just a phenomenal experience getting uh, Chloe across the line at Lake Placid last year. It was just, just, it was such a humbling experience just watching how great she was. Yep, and she, she excelled. <laughs> she did, she did. Wow, she flew through the course. So, um, yeah, I think this, I think we've done this, this chapter. I'm looking forward to the next two, uh, next week is motivation and the following week is momentum, uh, for everybody out there. Uh, normally we kick off these shows with a little bit of history with John and I, um, obviously you've heard some stories about us, John, very accomplished sportsman, 23 year old, uh, professional rugby league player hit by a truck in a wheelchair for 25 years. And then he rang me one day and said, I'm walking again. So he's a walking man. Um, and now he's written his fourth book. Uh, so if you like this story, subscribe, share it, and make sure you tune in to next week's show where we talk about motivation. I can't wait to get into that one. That's called Giddy Up. So, John, any last words from Down Under? Um, yep, some words from Down Under to, to Up Above. Yeah, I think, you know, change is hard, right? So, you know, most people don't change. Why? Because they get comfortable with old patterns and old habits. So, you know, changes are constant. It's actually happening you know, on a global basis with this pandemic. So, you know, it's time to change for all of us and to grow and stretch and be better people, better employees, better leaders. So um, mentors is a critical part of that process. And I'm, you know, I'm excited to reconnect with you next time on motivation. I guess it's better to lead the change rather than be a victim of change, right? Let's not be victims. Let's, let's, let's drive our own agenda. Let's drive our own bus. So John, appreciate you. What a great uh, talk. Look forward to the next one. Till that time, many more coffees, many more stories. And uh, we're saying goodbye from OK Boomer from here in Denver, Colorado and Sydney, Australia. So be safe, be good, and uh, start planning your change. And uh, the five M's will help you through that process.